brushes in history. So now if I want to go to like um, B I brush insert sphere, now you can insert spheres for the eyeballs. Um, I have a custom menu here. So I'm going to do an insert sphere of 12 and we can kind of just plop that in there and then move it back. Let's kind of reposition these eyeballs here. And if I want to make sure they're the same size, should be a simple, and you can also, if you want this to be like a pupil, you could rotate this around so it doesn't look wonky. Um, you could just do control shift and copy one over, and then you can just move and rotate this thing back into place here. And same thing for the teeth, same thing for the tongue. And the reason you might want to do that, in fact, we'll steal, maybe we can steal somebody else. You know what, we're going to steal some teeth. And the reason you might want to do that is just to make it easier on you. So if we want to do teeth, uh, do I have good teeth I can steal? The only one I can think of off the top of my head is a skeleton here. So I'm going to grab the skeleton. This is a female skeleton, but her teeth will be fine to use as Thor's teeth. Don't tell anybody. So we're going to do control shift. We're going to grab all these pieces here, control shift A, and we're going to delete hidden. And if you want to, you can use the skull to kind of position these teeth. So I'm going to go to B, create insert mesh new, go back to our Thor sculpt here, wherever he is. There we go. So now he's got eyeballs. Um, the eyeballs don't have subdivision history. And again, these eyeballs are being inserted on this mesh. So if I want to, I can just do a split mass points. I'm sorry, uh, we can do a group split or we can just isolate these and do a split hidden. That's under your subtool split menu. So now those are its own poly group. And then I can just go click my null object again. If you want to, you can rename it. And now we have teeth to insert. So what I can do is with my brush insert, I can just grab the skull out. And you can just insert the teeth. You don't need to bring the skull in. But if you want to use the skull for placement and like scale, uh, you can do that. A little bit creepy. But if you already have your own gums and your own teeth, you can feel free just to use that stuff. And the reason why it's a lot more useful, like when you're working traditionally, you know, you can sculpt things separately or sculpt them in like a very, you can go soft to hard or wax and clay and kind of mix and match for certain objects that you want to keep hard surface or epoxy resin if you wanted to, epoxy stuff and you can sand it or Sculpey, you can bake it off and bring it in and sand it and work at that with Siobhan or whatever. But digitally, it's just, it's super simple. It's all basically the same mesh, but now if I want to work on the teeth separately, I can, and I can like hide it. And you know, it's just one of the, one of the, let's turn on transparency. Yeah, it looks like it's lined up enough. So that's just one of the many benefits of working digitally. So if I just want the teeth, I don't want the skull anymore. I'm going to grab a piece of the skull, a piece of the jaw, control shift A, control shift drag to invert that, delete hidden. And now I've got some really creepy teeth in there. Um, but as a separate subtool, so if I want to work on them separately, I've got teeth, you can make gums, you can make a tongue uh, in there separately. Any, you know, anything in his hand, you probably want to get rid of that stuff. And I uh, just have that as a separate mesh. So all of that stuff there. Um, good question. Is there a way to have that back face masking toggle set to on by default for all brushes? Um, 